Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I'm going to show you guys how to import and use sound effects inside of Godot. So we're going to be doing this for the 1-bit platformer series. So first things first, you'll need some sound effects to put in the game. Coffee Valen Bat has a pretty good pack on itch.io for some sound effects you can use. So sound effects for GB Studio, Game Boy games, it makes sense for 1-bit. So we'll go ahead and give it a try. Uh, another alternative would be using uh, this tool, BFXR. So the BFXR website might look pretty simple, but it's a pretty good tool for creating uh, computer-generated sound effects uh, by using slider bars. It doesn't really take any skill. You just kind of have to play with it until you get something that sounds uh, interesting enough for sword attacks or item pickups, that kind of thing. I'm going to be trying the Sweet Sounds Pack. There's plenty of other options on itch.io and other sites if you want to look for them. Uh, but you just need some sound effects for this tutorial. So when you've downloaded it, we can create a new folder in our project. I'm going to call it either sound or audio. Uh, let's go with audio because it's going to have music and sound effects. So inside of that audio folder, we'll create a new folder, SFX for sound effects. And let's open it up in File Manager. Right click, Open in File Manager. And now you just need to copy over what you want out of the pack. So I'm not sure about this VGM format, but .wave will definitely work. So uh, you can grab as many or few of these as you want. Perhaps we want a confirm cancel sound effects. And let's do gun as well because we have projectiles, laser gun, and maybe monster scream. So we can copy those over and put those in here. And let's just find some places that we want to uh, actually instance these sound effects in the game. So an obvious example would be when we launch a projectile. So if we go to the player scene, let me zoom in here a bunch. Uh, we can close the behave tree. We're pretty much done with that for now. And we have our shooter script. So I think when the shooter fires, it would be a good idea to play the sound effect on the fireable. And uh, we'll have to create that in there. So let's see, fireable basic has weapon stats basic. So inside of shooter, we can give a sound effect to our fireable. Maybe we put it under weapon stats because we'd probably want a sound effect for when we attack with other weapons as well. So in uh, weapon stats, we'll add the sound effect and then shooter will play it whenever we instance a copy of the projectile. So let's look for weapon stats.gd. I'm going to export inside of here a uh, sound. So I'll say export var sound. And this will be a audio clip. And for this, if we hover over, let's say, the laser gun sound effect, we can see it's an audio stream. So I think that's the class we need, audio stream. Not MP3, but there are a few options here if you're using Og Vorbis or MP3. Dot wave sounds tend to be pretty space inefficient. So in the long term, you probably do want to use more like an Og Vorbis, I think. So uh, let's put in an uh, audio stream of any type. and we can click on the shooter, we'll expand the weapon stats basic, and here we can see our sound. So we just gotta drag and drop laser gun. Uh, I did test the laser sound. I think it sounds a little better for the kind of projectile we're shooting than the uh, gun sound effect. So when a shooter creates a projectile, if there is a sound effect in here, we want to instance a copy of it. So after the projectile launches, if there is a sound effect in Let's say fireball.stats.sound. So if there's a fireball stats sound, we're going to want to play the shoot sound effect on uh, probably the shooter itself. So I'm going to right click on shooter and add a audio stream player. So I'll say this is the shoot audio stream player 2D. Now we want to assign it to the shooter. So in shooter, I'll do at export var audio player, which is a audio stream player 2D. And then we want audio player to play that sound effect. So audio player dot play fireable dot stats dot sound. Okay, it should be float but is audio stream. Let's see. Okay, I guess we have to set the clip first. So let's see audio player dot stream I think is equal to fireball stop stat sound. Let's click over here. Yeah we can see this is the property of the stream. And then we play it from the beginning, which is the default here. So let's give this a shot. I'll hit play and we fire. So we can see invalid assignment because we have not assigned the audio stream player. So in the shooter, uh, we need to assign the audio player. Okay, now we can hit play. 
and you'll see that we can immediately play the sound effect. You could even have multiple going at the same time. And basically plays perfectly well. Okay, uh, so that's probably the easiest one, just a sound effect on shoot. Uh, we can also add ones on hit. So maybe the monster scream on hit. That's a bit loud. So this one, I would say is a little bit dramatic for just getting hit. So maybe this bump sound effect would be a little more appropriate. I'll bring that into the project too. So temporarily at least, I'll remove the monster scream and the gun sound effect. Uh, just because I don't think I'm going to use it in this tutorial, but I might bring them back later. Uh, so we have the bump sound effect. Whenever a hurt box gets hit, I think I'm going to default it to play the bump sound effect. So we can open up the hurt box script and give it a sound effect. So at export var hit sound, and this will be a audio stream. And then we want access to a player. So export var hit player, audio stream player 2D. Okay, uh, now we can give the hurt box its own audio stream player. And I am going to set the hit sound for the player to bump. Uh, maybe the player should have its own sound effect later on, but I'll just kind of make that the standard for now. And then we need to assign the uh, audio stream player. So audio stream player there. And I did just assign the bump sound right in there. So you could actually make the argument that you don't even need the audio stream set on the heart box because it's already set in the player. So I could just remove it from the hit player as long as we set it in the stream player down here and we don't mean to change the sound effect, it would be fine. Uh, otherwise, if you need to have multiple sound effects, you'd probably have like an uh, array of sounds on the hurt box and then play one of them depending on the circumstances. Uh, but this would work just fine as is. Let's go to the invader as well. On the hurt box, I will assign a audio stream player 2D. So the hurt box grabs the audio stream player 2D and that is going to use bump as the sound. So now if I shoot at the enemies, well, in theory, they would play the sound effect, but I guess I didn't set it up uh, correctly yet. So in audio stream player, after it gets hit, uh, if the hit player exists, so we can say if hit player, then hit player dot play from the beginning, we shoot at them. And if you listen closely, the, it's definitely playing the sound effects. Okay, so uh, that's good there. Now, where might you use a cancel or confirm sound? An example would be the game over panel. So the restart game button, we could have a confirm sound effect. So just as an example, uh, I'll give this a audio stream player 2D. Or actually, does it just even need to be? It could just be a regular audio stream player, couldn't it? Because uh, the UI isn't exactly in 2D space, so this should work fine. I'll use the confirm sound effect. Restart game button. Okay, we just need to reference the audio stream player. So at export var audio player. This will be a audio stream player. We assign it in the inspector. And before we change the scene, we're going to play the sound effect. So let's do audio player dot play. And that's, uh, you know, I mean, we would want the audio player to be there. We could say if audio player. If you want to make the audio player optional, then uh, that would be one way you do it. So let's hit play. I'm going to die intentionally. And then we'll try the confirm button. Yep. Okay, that worked pretty good. So one last thing for this tutorial, if you do want to include music, you should probably import it to the project as either a MP3 or a AUG Vorbis file. So if we search the help for loop and we scroll down to the bottom more or less, you'll see that two of the audio stream types, MP3 and AUG Vorbis, have loop supported. So if you toggle loop on, uh, then it will keep looping through as the game progresses. So you don't need to necessarily change it unless your scene changes and you want to change the music. And you could just use the same audio stream players as before to do that. So uh, specifically for music, I think that would probably go on an audio stream player, not an audio stream player 2D. Uh, music doesn't really need to be positional. It's just kind of there in the background. So you don't want it to actually have a 2D position in your game usually, um, unless it's coming from a certain source, like a music player actually in the scene, then you can use the audio stream player 2D. And that would basically be about it for playing music. It's just a uh, looping mp3 or arg vorbis file and you put it on an audio stream player that probably rests outside of the scene as a regular node rather than a 2D. 
So that just about covers what you need to know for audio inside of Godot, at least for the basics. And as you can see, of course, it works super well. It can support playing many sound effects at the same time, and you only need a minimal amount of coding to get it to work. In fact, if I'm honest, I wish I had actually just put the sounds in at the beginning of the course. Probably would have made it a little more interesting, but hey. So that's pretty much where we're at. It's uh, possible I'll still add extra tutorials to the series, though at least as a basic prototype, it is for the most part working. Of course, it would be nice now to add stuff like extra projectiles, maybe give the enemies projectiles, and then they can aim at the player, that kind of thing. But at this point, you guys should have a pretty good understanding of the basics of platformer mechanics, uh, shooting projectiles in 2D, uh, enemy collisions with players, behavior trees, and other miscellaneous things like setting up sound effects or game over screens and communicating data to the UI, like our little enemy counter over there to the top left. So thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys learned a lot. And until my future video content, I will see you then.